Hello! Just as a quick warning, this video mainly contains my face just talking to you. Uh, and also, if I start looking slightly shifty like this, it's because I've written a bunch of notes on this one. There's a lot of facts. So if I'm looking here, I'm looking at my screen and just checking the notes. With that done, let's get on with it. So over the last year, albeit somewhat intermittently, I've been championing the idea of OpenHD. And many people have seen the videos. They've got things like DJI goggles and the uh, the FPV system and they're wondering why are you bothering and they have a point if you look at it just like that setting up an open HD system is not easy you need several Raspberry Pis you need uh, specialized Wi-Fi adapters and things like this don't lend themselves particularly well for fitting in quads if you remember I had this awful like thing on the side in this particular quad that I flew they also have very specific power requirements about the voltage that goes in and the amount of amps you need to provide for them. And that's without getting into the like the 100 millisecond plus latency glass to glass, which really means you can't do stuff like uh, bandos or close proximity flying in quads because you just don't have the reaction time. On the flip side, a DJI system will give you a pretty high spec set of goggles, uh, low latency, uh, good optics, and it's pretty damn easy to install on a quad. In fact, there's several like bind and fly quads available with the DJI system already there. But the reason I jumped into OpenHD wasn't for what it will do right now. It was the promise of what it could do later on. And exploring a future direction is what I want to talk about in this video today. I've talked previously about the Ochin board, which is this uh, IO board here. It basically sits on top of a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. It's a bit more of a friendly size. Um, it's got all the power regulation available, although it still needs an external Wi-Fi card, which is why it's got this trailing thing here. I'm hoping to test this soon, but the, the board's just being revised in hardware and the new prototypes are just being tested at the moment. Elsewhere though, a Patreon was launched uh, in order to try and raise money to prototype specific OpenHD hardware. What they set out to do is produce uh, an OpenHD solution that would fit in a standard 30.5 mil stack um, a little what, like what's in this quad and many people will have in uh, their sort of five inch style quads the idea of this solution it would be completely open hd compatible but would have all the components on the board you needed so you wouldn't have to put your extra wi-fi boards on and you wouldn't have to do special things for power regulation and stuff like that it would all take care of it for you so what i wanted to do is follow up with the guys find out where they were how they were getting on and share this information with you so it's fair to say they are somewhat away from release but what they've been able to share with me so far are these renders which i'm going to show you now as mentioned it will fit on a standard 30.5 millimeter stack and the total height for these Two boards you can see there is between 12 and 15 millimeters so it could sit quite happily on top of uh, a flight controller um, or the more sort of modern frames designed for DJI generally have a, like a secondary stack at the back it could go there as well now as far as hardware goes a lot of people have sort of suggested FGPA FGPA is a great buzzword and for those that don't know exactly what it does in the most simple terms I can put it it kind of it's a way of defining logical flow if you like so you don't programming it like a, a regular chipset it's designed to kind of emulate other chips it's used quite often um, for very accurate video game emulation where instead of simply emulating certain chips through software you're literally putting it in the core of the FGPA and thus you get a very accurate emulation because you don't have to do anything special in software it's just literally running on a core pretending it's a CPU so you could use FGPA in theory to do your H.265 encoding by becoming the, the hardware chip that would do that normally of course there's the couple of downsides to FGPA one is the cost two is the amount of power and heat it takes to actually run it they're quite power hungry and they they run quite hot aside from being very expensive as well a much easier solution is to go out there on the market and find a type of board that will do these functions already and use that and this is what the team have chosen they've chosen something called the Rockchip RV1126 which features a quad core ARM Cortex A7 chip and that's going to have one gigabyte of LPDDR3 eight gigabytes of eMMC uh, onboard storage 
and allow an input voltage of 2 to 6S. It's going to run 5.8 GHz Wi-Fi. Uh, there is a potential option to introduce other bands later if they revise these things. So you could get 2, 4, 900, uh, anything. But this board will allow a power output of up to 1 watt, so distances will be considerable. As far as I.O. connections go, which is all important when connecting these things up, um, USB-C connector for doing config and software updates, micro SD slot for uh, video recording, a MIPI CSI camera connector, and a familiar MMCX connector for your antenna. It'll also have a UART connector for telemetry and controlling from your flight controller. For those of you that don't know how OpenHD work, you need telemetry from your flight controller going into normally the Raspberry Pi um, in order to basically populate what you're seeing in the OSD. So it takes that telemetry data, uses it on the OSD and you, you know what you're doing. The controlling thing, again for people that don't know, you can actually fly completely with a joystick um, connected to your Pi on the ground and it will send those signals over the Wi-Fi um, along with receiving the video. Um, most people don't do that, they tend to fly with traditional controllers but that's available there. So as mentioned this board can encode H.265 video and produce 720p at 60 or 120 hertz with uh, 1080p at 60 hertz and I keep mentioning H.265 and if you're wondering what that is it's basically a very efficient way of encoding video. Um, a lot of video you see at 1080p is generally encoded in H.264 obviously the previous incarnation of this. Just to give an impression of how efficient H.265 is. If you had an H.264 video which came out at one gigabyte, that same video encoded in H.265 would be about half the size, about 512 megabytes. And this means that if you're transmitting data over the air, you're able to do effectively twice as much data in the same amount of bandwidth, which is very important when we're talking about high definition video. Now if you're thinking to yourself, well I don't understand all this H.264, H.265 stuff, when I look at a video it's a .avi or a .mov or something else. These are just what's called container formats. Your AVI or your .mov will contain stuff related to the codec inside, which could be any number of things, so ignore that, just know that it's more efficient. But if you're wondering why everything doesn't use H.265 already, it's because it's very processor intensive. Usually you'd have some sort of dedicated hardware in terms of encoding and decoding to do it, because if you have to do it in software, stuff can slow down. I know when I was on holiday and I was filming with my uh, GoPro 10 in 4K at 120 frames a second, that had to use H.265 and my old laptop, which is um, a MacBook Air, just could not handle it. It was just jerking around frames. I put it in like 1080 which is an H.264 uh, and it, it's quite, quite happy. But it's an important point because it cuts out some of the lower spec pies because they just can't handle the H.265 uh, decoding. So on the ground side if, you, if you're if you going to use a Pi 3 that's just not going to work. You're talking about a Jetson Nano, a Pi 4 or a Compute Module 4 or possibly some future type of single board computer. Now right now this is going to be a development for the air side of things. So on the ground you'd still have your Pi 4 sat there and your HDMI out to your goggles. At some point they might do something else like a corresponding goggle unit but I think it's a good idea just to concentrate on one thing at a time and get the air unit out before thinking about what can we do in terms of the receiving stuff. Right now they've got their development system up and running although the software end of it's not really complete They've got their video transfer working and that's being developed at the moment. There's a lot of effort going into optimizing the H.265 decoding on the Pi 4 end of things. But their goal here is a sub 40 millisecond latency glass to glass. And that's using a data rate of about 20 to 25 megabits per second. This is a massive improvement right now on the current 100 to 120 millisecond glass to glass you get from two Pis in the air. Another bit of great news is hand in hand with the software they're developing to run on their development board is they're developing a configurator for OpenHD. The idea is this is going to be similar to sort of the Betaflight setup so you'll be able to move OSD about and change various options on how the board will work. This is very important because currently if you want to edit any of the config of OpenHD you have to edit a shell script on the Pi or one of the config files and it's a lot of text and options and not all of them are easily understandable. The other knock-on effect with this is um, individual OSD displays. Right now, you define your OSD on the ground end of things. Basically, you're saying 
for the data that comes in I want to show for example altitude here and I might want an artificial horizon and that's great on like fixed wing but if then you want to fly a quad you might want slightly different stuff in your display uh, and with this you'd be able to do that. One important thing to note though OpenHD is as the name suggests open it's uh, an open source project it's on github you can go in there you can look at the files look at all the code you can change it you can fork it make your own stuff uh, fiddle about with it to your heart's content right now the product we're talking about with the boards that they're tentatively calling the OpenHD Air Unit will be a commercial product and the hardware design will not be open sourced. If this decision doesn't mean that the devs are literally going to crank them out themselves, uh, the hardware could still be licensed to a, a larger company to produce them in bigger bulk, but it just won't be a free-for-all. I have to admit this creates a slight worry in my mind because the way to really get the price down of these is bulk. Um, large companies can get lots of components in, they can produce things at scale very quickly and that can bring the price down. It's not something a small team can do both in terms of manufacture and logistics and having the buying power to bring that price down. So I do hope some companies get behind it and license it so we can get this thing priced right and, and get it out there. Price is a little up in the air at the moment. We haven't got sort of solid figures on this and it can be very tricky with the chip shortages about planning things and knowing what's going to be available and how much stuff's going to cost. Obviously they do want to be very competitive against the other uh, digital systems and cheaper than what DJI charge. You'll also notice I haven't talked about the camera either. That's because they're under NDA with some potential suppliers but there's more than one potential camera they're, they're looking at at the moment. So that part isn't finalised. Okay, so when will we see more? It, it, it's working on the bench, essentially. It's, it's, it's transmitting data. They're talking about a, a real prototype, i.e. something they can show actually going in about the next three to six months, all being well. They've already gone through major design changes over the last few months, and as mentioned, the chip shortage is, is really hurting them. They were uh, trying to sort out the power regulation, and then they just couldn't find the suitable chips to get it right. So they have to sort of get battery voltage down to five volts to, to run it. So that's what's hopefully coming soon, and uh, that's essentially my update of, of their update, if you like. When I hear more, I'll obviously be excitingly telling you guys what I know and uh, what's coming. And in the meantime, I will carry on flying OpenHD uh, this way. I've got uh, my wing to hopefully fly soon with this guy, and I'm trying to get a new Pi Zero. Hopefully that's coming in the post today, so I can start building a bigger quad to uh, fly OpenHD in a little bit more robust way than than just basically gaffer taping it to the side which in retrospect is possibly a mistake and i have to say many thanks to max for giving me all the details of what the team is up to at the moment well i hope that's helpful and i hope that explains a little bit about what's happening and why i'm quite excited about where openhd is going in the meantime i will catch you in the next video bye for now well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.